This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Today, I'm here to share with you one writer's method for incorporating feedback in your writing. If your writer, at some point between putting the words down and it going out to its intended audience, you're probably going to solicit some feedback. And if you don't, you probably should. Be it from one or all of these sources, an alpha reader, a flock of beta readers, a writing group, a critique partner or five, a paid editor, an agent, an acquiring editor for a publishing house, or your mom, you're likely to receive some feedback other than, I loved it, don't change a thing, unless your mom is very different than mine. But when that feedback is more nebulous or overarching than typos and wording, it can be tricky to know where to start. Here are the six steps I follow when receiving reader feedback. Step one, read the feedback. You'd think it would go without saying, but it's easy to get ticked off three comments and decide that the person who sent you the feedback totally doesn't get your book, your genre, and might not even read your language and storm off. Luckily, I can calm my knee-jerk reactions by subscribing to what I call my rule of thirds. One third of the feedback is line and copy edits. Easy to fix or skip if it's a stylistic thing or they don't know what they're talking about. One third is where the reader just plain didn't get your story and or your writing style. You can probably just ignore these, but don't delete them just yet. You'll hear why. And one third of the feedback is the stuff that you thought you fixed, but really you just kind of painted over it and called it good enough. These issues are typically related to tricky things like motivation or setup or emotional impact. So after you've read through it, see the jet them. Step two, give yourself time to cool off. Sit on the feedback for a couple of hours or days or weeks, however much time you need before you can open it back up and face it without your ego screaming. Step three, analyze the feedback and fix the little things. Maybe this should be two steps, but as I go through line by line, I usually fix the little things so that they go away and they're not sitting there because when you look at all the comments put together, it just looks like a wall of comments, not this is a major thing that needs a lot of fixing. And these five things are, you know, spacing errors. Um, so I go through and I get rid of the little things so that I can see what actually needs to be fixed. Um, and while you're going through this feedback, you want to look not only at what the feedback is saying, but where it's saying it. The reader may have given you edits telling you how to fix it. They are only giving you suggestions, not fixes. But look at the scene, the paragraph that they edited. Maybe there is something confusing, something that wasn't set up properly, and that's why the reader got confused. Maybe you need to move the scene. Is there some way you can make it so that it was inevitable, given the world, the characters, and the issues involved? Maybe there's a better way to change it so that the pieces come together more smoothly. The reader might be wrong about how to fix it, but they often know where something needs to be fixed. Next, step four, what you've been dreading, make the actual edits. This is where you make the complicated changes, cutting or removing scenes or characters, fixing pacing, adding tension, condensing backstory. Whatever you've decided needs to be done, taking the suggestions and doing with them what you will. Step five, after you've done these edits, you're gonna have to reread and blend the new stuff with the old. Whether you've used the suggested wording from your reader or your own phrasing, edits don't always fit in smoothly with the rest of the manuscript. 
after you've agonized over feedback, debated how to integrate it, and finessed it with all of your skills, it's still going to need a bit more polish. You're going to need to reread the lead up through the outro of the sections that you've revised. Along the way, you're looking for continuity errors, awkward phrasing where you have changed a sentence, scene pacing. Maybe you need something to transition from one part that you plopped in there to the next. And of course, my favorite, repetitious paragraphs or phrases. The number of times that I've added a paragraph to emphasize something and then found I already had it nearly word for word like a page later where it better fit the pacing, well, let's just say it's more than a handful of times. And then after you make the edits, it's time for step six, send it out again. I like to send it to two types of people. Type one, people who have read it before to make sure I didn't break anything. And secondly, to a new reader to make sure that the confusion points were actually fixed. Now, I write fantasy, so there's a lot of world building involved. But even if you don't, you may want to do this too. An old reader can spot a lot, but they can't tell if you're introducing everything in the right order. Soon enough as to minimize confusion, but slow enough as to not overwhelm your reader. You can only have someone read your story for the first time once. After that, your world starts to become familiar territory. And that's it. That's my editing process for each and every round of feedback. I hope you've enjoyed this post because it's time for me to tune out and get back to step five on my current round of revisions. Do you have any editing tricks that I've missed? Anything you prefer to do differently? Let me know in the comments below. As always, feel free to subscribe. And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. It goes a long way towards helping people find me. And I'll be back again next Monday with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.